Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion, and I'm Bill Stone. This is the last part of a three-part series that evaluates abortion in the context of the Zero Aggression Principle, which states, No human being has the right, under any circumstances, to initiate force against another human being, nor to threaten or delegate its initiation. Now, since a fetus is inarguably a potential human being, at what point does it actually qualify as a human being, and therefore when is it a violation of the zero aggression principle to initiate force against it by aborting it? In part one, I discussed the zero aggression principle itself. In part two, I discussed sapience and sentience. And in this part, I will finally answer the question, since a fetus is inarguably a potential human being, at what point does it actually qualify as a human being? And thus, when is it a violation of the zero aggression principle to initiate force against it by aborting it? Now, the zero aggression principle must at some point apply to a fetus because it is a potential human being that achieves a sentience, which is a, a precursor in human beings, to sapience, which is the only thing that differentiates human beings from every single other animal on Earth. And it does this at some point in the gestation process. Small children are sentient but not sapient until about two years of age. And again, I covered this in part two of this series. And as a consequence, the zero aggression principle applies to children in the context of their parents caring for them until such time as they are capable of making rational decisions, which, as any parent will tell you, doesn't occur until many years after sapience is achieved. A fetus is a potential human being and is different from every other animal because barring brain defects or other birth defects, it will achieve a sapience and become a fully developed human being. That the fetus develops sentience in the gestation progress is obvious since human babies are born sentient. And this is why killing them after birth is always considered murder, or in the context of the zero aggression principle, force has been initiated against them that results in their death. When the fetus achieves a sentience and the zero aggression principle applies to it in the same manner as would uh, small children, to abort it post sentience would be to initiate force against it that resulted in its death. But the real issue is, when is sentience achieved during the gestation process? And this is a question that neither scientists nor philosophers can answer at present. Now, there are signs that it has occurred, such as types of movement within the mother's body or responses to conditions outside the mother. Babies have been known to kick or roll over, do things when there's been loud movements, things, uh, sounds, things like that. However, these signs will vary from fetus to fetus. Therefore, no date can be established after which the zero aggression principle applies there to this fetus. And there are scientific goalposts, such as brain size, beyond which, in a certain part of the gestation process, it is larger than sentient animals, such as cats and dogs, and therefore probably indicates that sentience has occurred. However, again, times and dates for this will vary from fetus to fetus, therefore no specific date can be determined, after which the zero aggression principle applies to the fetus. It is therefore clear that no law can be made, frankly I'd wish no law at all, see my first part of this, the zero aggression principle, but no law can be made to define when a fetus has rights, or more specifically, when the zero aggression principle applies to it. It can only be determined medically, and it will vary from fetus to fetus. So, my conclusion. It is therefore only rational to apply the zero aggression principle to a fetus when a doctor detects that brain size has grown large enough so as to be larger or equal to other sentient animals, such as dogs or cats. An abortion performed prior to this point is not a violation of the zero aggression principle. An abortion portion after that point, after sentience has occurred, is a violation of the zero aggression principle. Force has been initiated against the fetus that results in its death. And an individual who is responsible for the abortion, both the parent and the doctor, should be considered murderers. 
And that's all that I have to say about that. By the way, as a result of doing part one of this series, The Zero Aggression Principle, I think I'm going to do a whole video devoted to that subject. And then I'm going to hold a live stream as a Q&A so that you can ask me questions about The Zero Aggression Principle. I will answer them back, any question you like at all, and I'll do my best to give a fair assessment. So thanks for watching. I would love to keep this conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks in my comments section, and I'll do my best to respond to you. And you can also tell me, with respect to that live stream, when you think of the best time or day for me to do that so that you can participate in it. So if you like what I'm doing, please do like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would appreciate your support via my PayPal tip dar, my subscribe star, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all three of those in my description box below. So uh, that's all the time that we have for this highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing the control and manipulation of minds.